Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to you all to our ceremony of remembrance. Because of the unprecedented circumstances that we find ourselves in, we cannot physically be together. So I'm sitting on the south bank of the River Clyde, underneath the beautiful broad sky that connects us all, no matter where in the world we are. My name is Jennifer Buchan and I'm part of the chaplaincy team at the University of Strathclyde and I'm also an Explorer Scout Leader in Greenock and District. It is an honour for me to conduct this year's Remembrance Ceremony alongside some of the Scouts and Beaders in West Region and the young musicians from Port Glasgow High School. I hope that, whatever your own personal beliefs, you'll find this ceremony inclusive, sincere and meaningful. Every year we gather together to remember and to pay our respects to those who have fought for our country. We have to remember that since the Great War, our service personnel have left their families and communities to fight in wars and conflicts in the hope of bringing and maintaining peace. So who exactly are we remembering? When we think of combat, we mainly think of adults in the armed forces. However, at the beginning of the First World War, back in 1914, there were nowhere near enough men eligible to fight. Eligible to be sent overseas meant men over the age of 19. So, 250,000 boys under the age of 19 were then considered eligible. Some strategists believed that the war would be over before underage soldiers would be needed to travel across the English Channel. Because of the need for a larger army, some boys aged as young as 14 and 15 joined up. Their ages were overlooked as many of them didn't even have birth certificates. So the rule of thumb was if they were big enough and strong enough, then why stop a boy from volunteering to fight for his country? One boy, George Mayer, was just 13 when he was sent to the Somme. He fought alongside a boy of 12 who had to be lifted up to see over the top of the trenches. So as we remember those who have fought for this country against the enemies of humanity and democracy, we have to remember exactly who they were. They were people just like you and I, who were born in a different time when the world was a wholly unstable place. What happened to those who fought in the First World War was so horrific, so inhumane, so shocking that the Great War was then known as the War to End All Wars. In four years, 700,000 British soldiers were killed. People who volunteered and the people who were conscripted believed that they were fighting for the common good and the Allies would win the war within a matter of months. They would be coming home. They hoped that they would be coming back to be with their families and friends, to study, to work and to raise their children. For so many, that was not to be. One of the West Region Explorer Scouts will now share with us the story of the Unknown Warrior. The Unknown Soldier. On November 7, 1920, in strictest secrecy, four unidentified British bodies were taken from temporary battle graves at Ypres, Arras, Yassine and the Somme. The British soldiers who did the digging were not told the reason why. The bodies were then taken by field ambulances to GHQ at St Paul, Sir Tour, Nawaz. Once there, the bodies were draped with the Union flag. Sentries were posted in Brigadier General Wyatt and a Colonel Gell, selected one body at random, the other three were reburied. A French honour guard stood by a coffin of a chosen soldier overnight. The morning of the 8th of November, a specifically designed coffin, handcrafted from oak which had come from the grounds at Hampton Court, arrived in France and the unknown warrior was placed in the side. On top was placed a crusader sword and a shield on which was inscribed, the British warrior who fell in the Great War in 1914-1918 for King Country. 
On the 9th of November, the unknown warrior was taken by horse drawn carriage through the guards of honour to the quayside and missed the sounds of tolling bells and bugle calls. There he was saluted by Marshal Falk and placed aboard HMS Vernon, bound for Dover. Coffin stood in the deck covered in reefs surrounded by the French honour guard. Upon arrival at Dover, the unknown warrior was met with a 19 gun salute, which was a tradition that was normally reserved for field marshals. A special train had been arranged and was then conveyed to London's Victoria Station, where he remained overnight. On the morning of the 11th of November, the Unknown Warriors finally laid to rest in Westminster Abbey. The idea of the Unknown Warriors was thought of by Reverend David Railington, who had served as a chaplain on the front line during the Great War. The Union flag had been used in an altar cloth whilst at the front and was the one that had been draped over the coffin. It is his intention that all the relatives of the 517,773 combatants whose body had not been identified would have a focus of their grief. I could believe their lost husband, father, brother or son could be the unknown warrior. Thank you for that. Since the First World War, the Second World War and the conflicts which have followed, men and women have been injured and lost their lives serving our country. We are remembering people who left knowing in their hearts that their efforts would benefit their own country and those living overseas. They were fighting against regimes which persecuted individuals, whole communities, and fighting against ideologies that dismissed freedom, equality, and democracy. Those men and women fought so that we in our country could live in a society where we could vote for change, so that our rights could be considered and improved and so that we could live in safety and without fear. Since 1921, we have worn poppies inspired by the John McRae poem on Flanders fields, as we remember. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved and now we lie in Flanders fields. We will now go over to James Harrison, Dumbarton District Commissioner for the laying of the wreath, and then we will stand in silence as we remember all of those who have died in service to our country.
So we have remembered. What do we do next? What do we do when we have taken the poppies off and they have all blown away? What are our responsibilities to the memory of the people who have died? As human beings, is there anything that can bring us all together and make the world a better place? 72 years ago, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly in Paris. It was the 10th of December 1948. The Declaration recognises that the inherent dignity and the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family is the foundation of freedom, justice and peace within our world. As a chaplain, as a parent and as a humanist, the two most significant words in that sentence are human family. As an entire race, each one of us has the right to live a safe, dignified life, no matter who we are or where we have come from. When we are born, we are not born into a world of equality. And as a humanist, I believe that everything that can be done should be done to level the playing field. Each individual, no matter their gender, nationality, culture, language, colour, sexuality, those with a religious faith and those of us with none, should be treated with dignity, kindness, tolerance and respect and encouraged to live useful and fulfilling lives. As a global society, we are going through a period of upheaval and change and we have been told that the world in which we all live has entered a post-truth era. For reasonable and rational people, this is not reasonable or rational, and we must always prioritise the truth. We must look at the document written following the realisation of the worst atrocities committed against mankind in modern history. A document drafted by representatives with different legal and cultural backgrounds from all regions of our world. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights is not open to misinterpretation. So perhaps before making any decisions that affect ourselves, our families, our communities and our planet, and to ensure that we are definitely doing the right thing, we should give it a read. We owe it to those who have fought for the truth to give it a read. We should take a few moments to print it off and make it a document that we and our families are truly familiar with and we could take notice of it every day. Because maybe in a post-truth era, we should be looking for actual truth for us and the whole of our human family. It is universally agreed that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is the foundation of freedom, justice and of peace. And we should all be familiar with every word of it. We will now go over to more scouts from West Region to share with us all a poem by Max Ehrman, which is truly concerned with the human condition. Go placidly amid the noise and taste and remember what peace there may be in silence. As far as possible, without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to others. Even the dull and the ignorant, they too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons. They are vexatious to the spirit. If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain and bitter. For always there will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your own career, however humble. It is a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals and everywhere life is full of heroism. Be yourself, especially do not feign affection, neither be cynical about love. 
for in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. Take kindly the counsel of the years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth, nurture strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune. But do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here, and whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive him to be, and whatever your labours and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace with your soul. With all its sham, drudgery and bro broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful, strive to be happy. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive him to be, and whatever your labours and aspirations and the noisy confusion of life, keep at peace with your soul. With all its sham, drudgery and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful, strive to be happy. Thank you everyone. We have to think at the end of each day, what have I done well? How can I do better tomorrow? And we will remember those who have given us a better tomorrow. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. <laughs>